this is Dodger and you're watching my show. my swan song shirt in the mail. I almost said swan song, which I uh, don't know what a swan is. It's a pretty nice shirt. I actually really, really like the design, but I don't think they're on sale anymore. So <laughs> anyway, for our first piece of news, um, the Black Ops 3 trailer came out. So that's been getting some, some buzzles specifically because it's interesting because I think that all of the different FPSs that have a lot of uh, attention on them have started really heavily borrowing from one another. Like for the most part, when people watch the trailer for Black Ops 3, they're saying, okay, I'm seeing lots of Titanfall here. I'm seeing some advanced warfare. So, you know, pulling along that way. A um, little bit of Deus Ex in there. And you know, some classic rock just to, just to bring it all together. The game will be coming out on November 6th. So we have a date now. And I feel like for the most part, the people who are watching it are pretty jazzed about this one because putting on a suit and having it just sort of, you know, make you more powerful is intriguing, but there's something about the permanence of having a robot limb that I don't think having having an advanced suit of armor really captured. So having a Black Ops game where, you know, people have robot arms, robot legs, all sorts of things like that, there's, there's just something so interestingly otherworldly about it. Ignore the fact that in terms of actual Black Ops, this game, nope, nothing about it. It does look interesting, although I say that about pretty much every Call of Duty game, and then I wait and let all of my other friends play them and then hear what they say, and for the most part, you know, <laughs> they come back and say, it was I. Right. So we'll see what hardcore Call of Duty fans say about this game, but it will be at the end of the year, and if you want to get into the beta, you will have to pre-order the game. Mario Kart 8 DLC came out and it got a pretty positive response. The thing that has created the most, uh, buzz. Have I said buzz too many times in this episode already? The thing that has really caused the biggest conversation is the 200cc mode. And what that is, is it's, I mean, it's just fast. It's really fast. I think I'm not the only one when I say that in terms of the different speeds, like the different difficulties in terms of speed in Mario Kart, it still has always felt like kind of a watered down racing game. Don't get me wrong, I'm not like amazing at it. I don't play it and go, all these scrubs, am I right? It's just, it didn't have the same feel as like, you know, F-Zero. It didn't, it didn't feel like you were going real fast. So now we have the 200cc mode and people who play Mario Kart have been tweeting all sorts of hilarious gifts along with the statement, wow, 200cc makes me feel like it really is a big difference. Even watching it, you can tell that there's a huge difference in speed. And I'm not sure why with the other difficulties that have been in Mario Kart for so long, I'm not really sure why those didn't quite feel as drastic. And now this one feels so different to the point that hardcore Mario Kart fans are saying, wow, this is really changing the meta. That sweet, sweet Mario Kart meta. <laughs> and you know, we got some cute new characters and things, but in terms of stuff that is really either forcing people to learn how to use the cart, right? Because someone like me, I play Mario Kart and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I have a break. <laughs> I just, I forget. Or like, you know, the other people I'm playing with are drifting and I go, I don't know how to drift. I guess I'll just wing it. It's really forcing people like me to sit down and figure out how to actually play the game. Because unless you know how to play the game, you are super hosed, super, super duper hosed. And it does apply to all of the uh, different past levels. So you can play like real old tracks, but real fast. The response for Killing Floor 2 has been mostly positive, unless you were talking about their end user license agreement. If we're talking about that, there's been a lot of controversy. The reason being basically Tripwire, which is the developer for Killing Floor 2, uh, they put together their EULA and said, look, if you're going to harass people, if you're going to bully people, if you're going to say rude, sexist, racist comments, then we have the right to actually not only ban you, but take away your game key, which to a decent number of players sounds fairly extreme. Now, some of you might be watching and saying, I don't understand. Why is it so hard to not just 
do those things, right? So I think the big problem here is the difference between putting something in your end user license agreement in order to just sort of, you know, cover all the bases versus what's actually going to happen, right? So a lot of people have been having conversations in forums and whatnot saying, well, you know, depending on who you're talking to, depending on who you're playing with, other people are going to find other things offensive. And if something like getting your key revoked is on the table as a punishment, then it's going to be really easy for somebody to just claim that a person was harassing them or claim that somebody was doing something awful, right? Tripwire responded saying, look, in the past however many years, we've only ever taken away two licenses because yes, we have reserved the right to do that since the beginning with all of our games. It's not something that they do often, it's just something that is in there so that if they feel that the situation is dire enough that somebody deserves a punishment so severe as to not- I just spit. I was spitting. If somebody actually deserved that, then it could happen. They would just not own the game anymore. And let's be honest, who actually owns games anymore, right? Because if you buy it on Steam, I mean, you barely own it. You barely own it. And yet still, that does not calm the masses. I say, it shouldn't be too hard to not be a dick, right? To just play a multiplayer game and not do something that could be construed as dickish. And if somebody accuses you of such and you believe that you are being wrongfully accused, there are always ways to combat that and to say, look, here's what I said. It was taken in this way. I'm sorry, slash, I don't believe that I deserved this sort of punishment. I don't believe that I deserve to be banned from that game. I don't believe that I deserve to be banned for a certain number of time. And, you know, as a extreme example, I don't think I deserve to have my game key revoked to be the number three person in history that Tripwire has taken a game key away from. I feel like that's going to be a very extreme situation. That would be like, there's no doubt in my mind, you are the scum of the earth. You don't deserve to play our game, right? Like that's, that's a, a big statement to make. So I don't, I honestly and truly do not believe that the average layman, as it were, needs to be worried about that. In general, it's just gonna be the same thing as with any other game. Don't be a dick in a multiplayer game. For some of you who are frequently looking at r slash gaming on Reddit, you might remember a post from a while back, not too long ago, but a little while ago that was talking about a new Conquers game and how Microsoft had apparently just abolished it. That it was off the table, it was on the table for a while, and now it's gone. And this was all hearsay, but on the post it was verified, which is kind of a big deal. The writer of that post recently came out saying that he made it all up, that it was all a ruse, that it was all fake, there was never a new Conquers game being made, especially not one by Microsoft, and you might be wondering how he did it. How did he wind up having a post that got verified and then covered by multiple sources? How did he do that when it was all a lie? Aside from the fact that so much of gaming industry rumors are just that, just lies and rumors that people make up. So it turned out that this was actually for a class. This guy was being given the task to go viral, to do something and make it go viral. And that might sound weird, but imagine a situation where like maybe he's in a PR class, maybe he's in a marketing class, maybe he's a marketing major even. So with his very diligent knowledge of the gaming industry, he says, okay, if we were to make this game, who would be a good publisher and who would be a good developer? What would create the biggest like uprising of interest and then upset hurt feelings at hearing that it wasn't going to happen, right? What sort of a rumor could I create that would really take off? And he did it. The way he got his post verified was just to make a fake document with like the Microsoft logo in the top corner and have it say that it was to him and block out some stuff. Be like, here I got, there's a letter about my department Microsoft, they were like, got it, you're verified, sir. It's hilarious, but at the same time, it's really cool because it shows us step by step how he managed to create this lie and have everybody believe it, you know? Like, what he really needed to do 
in order to make it seem like it was true, like fake emails, fake documents, like actual real life documents on a table that he took a picture of, you know, he like, he went so far. But again, it was all just for a school project. And the reason I wanted to cover this is because to this day, I still get tweets from people being like, did you hear about that Conker's game that Microsoft canceled? And I'm like, yes, yep, I have. I have heard about that. <laughs> It just goes to show guys, in the gaming industry specifically, if you see something and it's a rumor, there is such a high likelihood that somebody made it up, such, such a huge likelihood. It happens all the time, all the time. People who would call themselves modders have been pretty upset about a couple of things these last few days. On Steam now, you might've noticed that you can actually have a paid mod that you can create a mod for a game and then charge people for it. The response to this has been, I mean, depending on who you are, every now and then positive, but mostly negative. It's been mostly people saying, well, these were things that have been free forever. And like, why now are we gonna have to pay for them? And then the actual modders of the community saying, well, this is going to create a situation where sure, we're getting money for our time and energy, which is, you know, amazing but we're going to have this strange monopoly of modding on Steam that we don't necessarily want. Even Gabe Newell did an AMA about it and said, look guys, I think that we should, you know, be positive about this. I wanna make a situation where, you know, modders are able to mod, that we're rewarding modders for all of the hard work that they do because so many games are coming out and you know, people wish that there was a modding community, but maybe it's really small and this sort of thing could help it grow. And at the same time, some modders are saying, well, you know, we're doing this to learn things or we're just doing this for fun. And so when somebody is going to charge, but I don't want to charge, it's going to create a very different ecosystem here. Right now, I think the biggest conversation is happening in the Skyrim modding community because the Skyrim modding community, even to this day, is still so huge. But they don't necessarily want it to feel like it all has to be on Steam or like some people should get paid and some people shouldn't, depending on how good they are, how much time they put into it, right? And on the other hand, maybe you know, some of the outcry from us being like, this used to be free and now it's not, that's not fair, isn't really fair to the modders because they are putting time and energy and work into it. And for us to expect to get that for free isn't very fair either. So it's just been, it's been an interesting couple of days reading about this. I do not think that the conversation's over. I think that it's probably going to continue for a little bit here, but um, yeah. Gabe is, is very staunchly on the think positively about this, it's all gonna be fine, and no, we're not getting rid of it. Um, whereas, you know, some of the modders and some of the people who frequently use mods are a little, a little off about it because Steam gets to take a cut, right? The modder themselves, they get to say, basically like, here's a base price, pay what you want beyond that, which is a nice model, but you know, it's just, it's just different. And last, but certainly not least, the most depressing news of all of it that has made me so sad for the last couple of hours, um, Silent Hills is apparently canceled. Silent Hills, for those of you who don't know, was the game that Silent Hill PT was made as like a teaser for. Lots of people were playing PT saying that it was incredibly scary, incredibly well made, that it was just, so aesthetically interesting and wonderful. And the excitement for Silent Hills just continued to grow and it was going to be made by Kojima and Del Toro. But as we know, there have been lots of problems with Kojima at Konami lately. Now this last week or maybe the week before, Konami was saying, look, Kojima's gonna be here until the end of Metal Gear. Like that's totally fine. But never once, never once did they say anything about Silent Hills. And now, Del Toro has said, makes me really sad, the project is canceled. Makes us really sad too, Del Toro, that's awful. <laughs> like, we got that taste. You know, we got PT and it was such a great, amazing taste of what they could have made. Like a full game of that. And I'll be honest, I didn't even play it. I didn't even play it because I watched my friends play it and I was like, nope, <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not touching that. But watching it, I was so engaged. I was so interested in what the full game could be like. 
and then we got to see trailers for the full game and we were just ugh, so excited for it, so jazzed. And then the game's canceled. It seems like ugh, it's, there was so much potential there and they're just like letting it fly away. Hopefully the project is just benched. Like I would love it if they came back to it, but at the same time, knowing that more likely than not, 99% sure that Kojima wouldn't be part of it anymore, which then that's, you know, half the team gone. So if you're like me and you've been excited for Silent Hills, I'm so, so sorry to be the one to tell you that it's been canceled. It's depressing news. It literally was just said today, as far as I know. So, Ugh. hopefully one day we'll get another good Silent Hill game. One day, one day. And this could have been it, but maybe, maybe it's just not its time. It's too, it's too forward thinking, man. The world isn't ready for it. Anyway, that's been my show. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a positive or a negative response, feel free to leave it in my comment section. And if you would like to have coffee with me, you can click wherever I put the annotation and it'll take you to my other channel. But otherwise, I hope that you have had a fantastic week. And a big thank you to Erin who filled in for me last week while I was still in Poland, you sweetie pie. If you wanna watch her anime news, you can watch it here or on the end slate. And otherwise, uh, I will see you guys next weekend. Okay, bye-bye. Wow, this is really changing the meta.